start thinking like, and you, my friend, what hair have you grown recently? You know, <laughs> like all of a sudden your syntax and cadence changes. <laughs> I think it's cool. I think it would be cool to do that more often. This one is one that I wrote about a year ago. Again, it was w when the fall was just coming on. It's called Midway, and I would walk up to the little coffee place in Bernie and get a cup of coffee. And I can't remember why I gave it this title. It had something to do with something esoteric, um, but I've forgotten what it was. It's called Midway Through the Eighth Spark. <laughs> Midway Through the Eighth Spark. Midway through the eighth spark, I chanced upon a table in the wood by a stream near the wood with a view of the mountain bursting into the sky. And as I sat with my latte and cigarettes to read prehistoric wisdom and let my thoughts climb the tree, eat of the sweet orange fruit, and then fly with the eagles. Above me was my friend the sun, and through the sun I could see the father and the mother and feel the loving presence pressed against the sky. It was so good to breathe clear air, to bird's eye the vista through varied winged shapes. Now a hawk, now an osprey, now a jay, now through the eyes of the red-tipped downy pecker, and then the swallow and the finch and then ascending through transformations, the eagle flying to the uppermost branch, where once again I feasted upon the ripe fruit. It would be good and fair, I thought, to see below as well as above, to spend time with the worms and moles and snakes and spiders who live in holes, to discern if it be true, if as the ancients say, as above, so below. And so in monkey form I swung with agile grace from limb to limb until upon the death, the duff, I rust, rested. And then in string-like reptile form I furrowed to the root, winding round it, climbing downward into the underworld, till at the deepest rootlet, closest to the point of no return, I met a bug curled in a ball, unresponsive. And so I shriveled to a single cell with tiny hair-like feet and marched into the womb of the bug where I could feast upon her juices. And having sated my cytoplasm, I slipped into a slumber and dreamed of a table by a stream by the woods with a view of the mountain. And so from that time on, I called the bug the mother of my mind. <laughs> and then this is the first poem that I've written for a while. Um, why? Because I was like all itchy and couldn't concentrate on anything. And, uh, and I was confused. And this poem is called E Pluribus Unum. In my confusion, bathed in tears and seated by the hot... I'm sorry, I'll come back again here. In my confusion, bathed in tears and seared by the hot winds of flesh, I have longed to find the one and been blinded by the many sharp facets of the diamond snake. What a fool I have been to leap off so many cliffs, carried away by so many streams of hope and desire, believing that somewhere in these troubled waters I would find peace. Instead, I found rocks, flesh-eating bacteria, fish with hooks through their lips. Occasionally, I could grab a limb, pull myself to the shore, lay on the rocks with the snakes and the turtles worshipping the sun until my flesh burned and my eyes could see only blinding light. The water whispered secrets. I longed for my anima and surrendered to the siren call of the goddess as she consumed me with desire. I cried out to my personal Jesus, so many things he teaches me. The meek shall inherit the earth, love your enemies, hang from the tree and forgive. I drank wine with Diana and Dionysius under the full moon, dancing with critters until I lost my mind, lost my boundaries, unleashed my demons, and met the devil in myself. My skin burns, and now I can no longer think 
I try to make, take refuge in the Buddha, but my compass is broken. The needle spins in a vortex, showing north, south, east, and west in all directions. What is just? What is right? Saturn has returned and my universe is contracting into a black hole. I hear the voices of many gods, feel the caress and the admonition of many goddesses. All one, all alone, one power, many masks. Sometimes Morpheus grants me entry into oblivion. Occasionally Asclepius provides a healing touch. The trinity of birth, life, and death. Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, anabolic, metabolic, catabolic, personalizing and pathologizing, seeking meaning to it all, trying to hold on to my identity in the onslaught of transcendent archetypes. I burn, I drown, I fall through endless space into a deep subterranean tomb. Few return from the underworld unscathed. Most of those who do are mad. But that's enough for now. The camel that I am trying to lead through, the eye of this needle, the point that I am trying to arrive at is e pluribus unum. <laughs> okay. Thank you.